hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description of my website. I'm Chris with a K. Today, what are we going to be talking about? We're talking about UUIDs. What is that? Well, it's a universal unique identifier. What does that mean? Basically, it's a long string of characters to help you prevent you from mixing things up. So something can get a UUID and you know that UUID is for that device or that file or whatever it is you're looking at. For example, on your computer on Linux, if you were to list out on most systems under dev disk, you'll be able to get all the disks, the hard drives and partitions on your system, but you probably have a slash by UUID. If you run that, it will give you a list of the files by their UUID. And of course we can add dash L H A to get a long list. And there, it will point to what they're pointing to. So I know that the UUID for this partition is this, and the UUID for this partition is this, so forth and so on. This is useful in your fstab file, so list etc fstab. Inside that file, you can determine, you can set what partitions are mounted where. And this is useful because you might have multiple drives and multiple partitions, and you want to make sure that the proper drive gets mounted as your root directory, but maybe you want other partitions to be mounted in particular places. You can set all that in the fstab file. That's how I say it, fstab. Uh, I'm not sure if there's another way to say it. So if I was to add a new hard drive to my computer, my computer should still mount the proper drives in the pop proper places because each partition should get its own UUID, which is not necessarily hard-coded into the hard drive. When you format it, it gets a UUID. And again, this just determines, this helps you narrow down and know exactly which partition is which on which drive, even if you have multiple drives and you add new drives or remove old drives. There's other places this is used. And again, as uh, it's stated in my little opening here, is that it's a large number. And so the possibility of getting the same number twice is not zero. It's, it's very hard for you to, especially on the same system or even globally, get the same UUID twice to where they're gonna conflict with each other. But let's say you want to generate a UUID for with a script. Uh, you probably already have on your system a command, that's not what I wanted to paste, a command called UUID gen. You run that, and each time you run it, it gives you a unique UUID. Okay? That's great. That's one way to do it. Well, recently, I actually wanted to create a UUID, but I wanted it to create a predictable one, if that makes any sense. I was working with uh, VCF files, so basically contact files for your contacts on your phone or wherever you save your contacts. And each contact can be issued their own UUID. And I, since I was converting from one format, I pulled a bunch of contacts from my works website in a JSON format, and I was converting it. I wanted to give each user its own UUID, so that way if I was to pull down the information again and I was to upload it, it doesn't duplicate the contacts because it will look to see if they have the same UUID. So I wanted to generate a UUID based on something like that user's name, most likely. So the way you could go about doing this is I can echo out a string. <laughs> unique string, anything I want. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe that output into this OpenSSL command. So OpenSSL is for encryption, but it's going to basically generate uh, some information based on this string. And then we need to do some formatting. We're just going to do this. So now we get a big long string, but it's way longer than we need it to be. We only want, I think, 36 characters. So we're going to run that same command, but pipe that into the cut command, and we're going to cut from character 1 to 36, and now we have a UUID. And although this is unique and this will work for a lot of things, the UUID standard, there is a standard, uh, requires there to be dashes in there at certain places, as you can see up here. So how can we do that? Well, we can add to the end of the command we just ran another said command. I'm going to put all this in the links in the description, so don't worry. So now, when I run this, let me clear the screen. Each time I run this, I'm going to get the same UUID because it's based on this string, our seed, if you will. It's the seed, so it's creating something based on a string we gave it, so it should generate the same UUID, but it's still long enough that we're not going to get the same thing. Because theoretically, you could put two different strings in here that generate the same UUID, but the odds of that happening are astronomically small. But I can do that in, for, in my case with the contacts. And if I use the string of the person's name, that means that if I reconvert that JSON file over to a contact file and try to upload it to my next cloud, it's not going to create duplicates of every contact because it's going to see that UUID already exists. Um, so again, 
I'm getting the same one because I'm using the same string. If I change this string at all, it's going to give me a completely different UUID. So again, I could put in someone's name here like John Smith. <laughs> and it will give me a unique UUID. And of course, this if I change this to a lowercase s, it's going to give me a new one too. But if I'm using a script to pull that person's name from the contact, it's going to generate a unique ID for that person, as long as I don't change the spelling of the name. At that case, I might end up getting a duplicate contact because I changed their name. Anyway, again, this is a big long command. Everything we've talked about in today's video will be in a link in the description of the video. So you can go ahead and check that out. If you have a better way of creating a UUID uh, that is that uses some sort of string input as a seed that might be shorter than my command, I would love to hear it. Put it in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Visit again filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. As always, I hope that you have a great day.